Hello, g'day, how's it going? Hope you are all well. Uh, this today, it's going to be more of a question and answer show because I've got some stuff that I want to do, I have to do, and I'd like to spend more on the breeding topic. Uh, so I hope that's all right. I know there might have been a few people looking forward to the breeding. Frank, which is very helpful in his experience, he was willing to help too. So thanks for that. And yeah, well, in a few weeks, I would like to spend at least an hour, hour and a half on it because I really love the breeding and that's something that's, yeah, beneficial. Uh, so today would be more of a Q&A. So if anybody's got some question and answer stuff, we can I can show a few slides and spend um, a little bit of time here going through some things. This is a show that's or that's legal and pr promotes legal activities and safe uses of medical cannabis. I don't promote anything that's against the law and all my questions and things I hope are related around to the law and that sort of stuff. I only like to work with people who are those types that up, upstand the law and try and do the right thing and good safe health. Uh, so um, does anybody, let's go through chat and I can say g'day first. That's a very polite thing to do. So g'day to Frank. Thanks for that, mate, for, for trying. Uh, Full Throttle, how are you? Look forward to watching your show. He says, Vinny, how you going, Vin? Sunshine Rainbows. Howdy doody buckaroonies, he reckons. Yep, sounds like he's in a good frame of mind. That's the way. He reckons he's going to start the day with some good medicinal oil. Very good. I can press this up here, eh? Yes, sir. Cheers, everybody. Terence Down Under. Hope you have a good weekend and it starts off well. That's what they say. Hope it's all starting well for you. And for those people who aren't in Australia, I hope your evening's going well <laughs> in North America. Cheers. Good on you, Frank. Hey, Down Under Fuller. How you going, Down Under Fuller? Morning, Queensland time. In hot... Queensland up there, aren't you? Progression of cannabis through the Australian society. Yes, it's very good. Hey, there's Huda. How you going, Huda 420? All right, today's a more of a question and answer thing. So if you've got any Q&As of any stuff in your brain you'd like to get off your chest that I can possibly show some slides and help you out with, that would be good. Um, the acceptance of cannabis is inevitable, says Terence. And we need to move forward the best possible way to help everybody learn the most about medical cannabis to mitigate harm. Oh, wow. Well. That fella should have a show. Oh, he does have a show. Terence McKenna down under. Good work, mate. Huda won't be able to stay around long, no. Oh, that's all right, Huda. I probably won't be. Today's not a real long show. I'm putting off that breeding one for probably through until we get through the Christmas break because it's a fantastic topic and I'd like to spend a good hour, possibly hour and a half on it to really go into it because it's it's terrific. The stuff that you can get out of it, it's um, yeah, really enjoyable. So no worries, Huda. Thanks for your support, mate. Harm mitigation and health above all, yes. G'day, Jeff Propalia. How you going? And there's Mick S. What's happening, Mick S? Terrence, g'day. Aussie Autos, hello, hello. Has anybody, Aussie Autos has always got some interesting odd questions to ask. What's on your head, on in, in your brain at the moment, Aussie Autos? You must have a weird thing that I can start off and this is just a Q&A thing today. I'm gonna to save the breeding thing for a few weeks time until um, I can spend a bit more time in it. Sorry about that for those who might've got excited. All right, thanks CC, Jeff, hey. Gear changer, how you going, gear changer? Um, I've got to spend something. I've got to show something. What's something positive then? All right, let's see what I can just at least share. Something positive. There's a there's a reason being. This is what is in for present. I'll just share. I'll just show you the screen, and this is all the slides that I have got for breeding. So there's all of these. All different types of studies on UV, 
UV plant study, UVB plant study, testing, drought studies, how to test your own, plant hormone studies, different stress reactions in those studies. There's a photosynthesis study, uh, land race strains, yes, breeding and genomic studies, different uh, hang drying methods and what not to do and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Those <laughs> Actually, here you go. I'm going to give you, have a, oh, no, I'm not going to wreck it. And there's um, on hybrid vigor, heterosis, that's called, studies on that, how to improve it. Bit of the latest news. This is the reasons why I do these things is because of this, because of the deaths since January 1st in 2000 from all these different types of other possible things, bed sores, 2 million people died. I don't know where this is related to, maybe the States, but, and then you come down to the bottom and the amount of deaths from cannabis is zero. So they could have put alcohol in there too. That would have been a nice statistic just to throw in. But this is, you know, a reason why to support it among everything else. So I've got all these things we can go through and I'd like to go through in a bit more detail. Here's some, um, actually, is if you go through and do your stuff properly, this is what you'd be expecting to get. Bringing out the genetic potential is very, very important. And you can unlock the colors with this anthocyanins as well. Actually, I'll show you the next one. Nice. There's some other nice looking chunks. All right. Go back to chat. Any chats going on? I'll put this screen up. Today's just a Q&A, guys and girls. It's for to wait too long for me to wait longer to go to the breeding into breeding in depth, where I'd like to spend an hour or at least an hour and a half. So it's going to be not that today. Sorry, that was advertised. Apologise for that. Gear changer. Hey, there's Monty420. How are you going? Here's a question. What are your thoughts on doing a water pH in live soil? <laughs> See, this fella knows. He knows that the pH in living soil neutralizes itself. It has natural buffering where it keeps it hovering around the sort of 6.5 to 7 range, like the really perfect range. So um, great question. What's your thoughts on doing it? Well, the reason why I think it's cool is because if it does wander, if you have, if your microbes in your soil aren't doing what they want, and for instance, you might feed them a tea that might be from a source of the umycetes or pythium or something that's going to really cause problems and bad fungal infections. So that might get in and upset the biosphere that you've got going in there. And that might drop the pH. And then you might think, oh, why am I getting deficiencies? Well, it's just because the pH has, has been dropped from adding problematic, not beneficials, from pathogenic, um, pathogenic ones. Um, so that's maybe an advantage from testing it. But yeah, in general, if everything's on point, you don't need to because it naturally buffers. Good on your Aussie autos. And he already knew that too, I reckon. He's laughing back on you. Yeah, I already knew that. <laughs> Great question though, mate. Thank you. One, two. Hey, there's Grokoski. How you going, Grokoski? That fella works so blooming hard, I couldn't keep up with it. I sleep. My sleep session... And he's doing two different jobs. He's coming back and I'm just waking up. He'd be all right. Yeah. I just got to make this much money. I'm doing that. <laughs> Productivity. Good on you, Koski. Aussie Autos. Uh, Jeff says, what's a good backup light for a greenhouse? Any solar? Oh, they've got this new thing that they've invented in Newcastle. That is a film that you put over the top of greenhouses and it's supposed to take any type of light, even dull light, and it focuses into the red spectrum, into the, the yeah, to the 630 nanometers, you know, into the red spectrum. And that's a bonus. So I would probably look into maybe that if you live in a lot of overcast areas like UK, for instance, this would be very beneficial. Uh, they've done some side-by-side -side tests and you can see the difference. Actually, you could even do your own, but but that's a good, useful backup. But but what's an actual backup light for a greenhouse? Uh, well, the greenhouse lights, they've got to be up pretty high, so you've got to have something to penetrate down. Uh, good question. I couldn't accurately answer it. I don't have experience in that area. But it wouldn't be... It'd be something that's powerful, like a stadium light, 
and it mightn't be something that's but you want the diodes now that incorporate oh, five oh geez uh, you know there's two different types of lights you can get the cheaper ones which have the stadium types of lights in them which is i think it's 510b actually someone will say it and if you get the newer ones which are the more advanced ones the h's they give out a full spectrum but the b's are the stadium lights so possibly those b's which are the cheaper versions in the leds they might be beneficial any solar lights i'm not sure about solar i remember with greenhouses too that you if you get laminated glass that that's a blocker of uv so you've got to be careful with that what type of filter or what type of covering you're putting on your greenhouse good question jeff keep up the good work mate here we go jeff have you, frank's knowledgeable fella have you checked out high bay leds there you go high bay leds good suggestion gear changer yo jeff have a awesome day bro yeah gear changer hey there's sean the best and it even says it in his name how's it going sean no frank i'll be looking all right bit of a chat in tin para how you going in tin para uh yep gotta make money brother uh koski's laughing see yep yeah, good on you koski hot as anything he's already off to the waterfalls chilling in the cool water look at gear changer showing off sitting in the waterfalls in the chat good on your gear changer oh yep how you going, Cremor Cannabis? Seymour Cannabis. Ah, oh, Seymour it is. Jeez whiz. Yes, we all like the Seymour. <laughs> Intin Barra. Looks like, yep. Sorry, Jeff. Thanks. Seymour, Sean the Best. Love Hordelux, he reckons. Whoops, don't want to put him in timeout. Loves Hordelux HPN double enders. Yes, they're sweet. They are very good. Frank, cheers. All right. We're at the end what else can i tell you or anything interesting well that's it i've got nothing more to talk about i don't really like talking about me um what do you think it's well this is really to do about you guys would you like a q a for the next week or should i just put it off for a few weeks or um what do you think what do you think guys and girls it's got a 30 second delay too it takes to get back so i realize that Hey, small tubes. Look at him coughing, carrying on. That's the way. Getting medicated. Small tubes. That's good. <laughs> um, Sunshine Rainbows asks if soil regulates at 2.7 and ideal pH is 6.5, does this mean you have to periodically add sulfur to drop it? No, it'll hover in that range. Uh, and... Well, like, remember that the plant puts out in its exudates, it puts out protons, which are hydrogen atoms. And that's what pH is the measure of. So if you've got heaps of roots and they're exudating, they're transpiring and doing their process and the roots are swapping and exchanging minerals with a cation exchange, you're going to get a very high, um, the pH might be on the lower side, but it should buffer it from all the activities and the microbe and the processes that's going on. But it doesn't pay to check it. It doesn't, um, it's not, usually you'll see a deficiency and it'll be a pH thing because it's just gone out of whack or your microbes have gone out of whack or some have gone dormant or they're not in favorable conditions to keep those ones alive or they might have reached their uh, amount of food source because if it just runs out, because they'll keep replicating, replicating and then if the food source goes, they won't keep replicating so that will allow another microbe to come in and take its position and it could be a bad one to uh, make the biosphere unequal and that might be something that's caused problems and brings in the acidifiers and drops your ph too but i wouldn't worry yeah ph is 6.5 sweet so yeah the 6.5 to 7 i love testing it just to every I don't know, even if I don't test it, I'll still probably do it once every three or four weeks just to, for me to know that everything's on point, everything's around that. I think 6.5 too, I get mine usually. Everything's around that. 
good question, sunshine. Living soil, woohoo! Yes, organics is the go. Thanks, Aussie C. Great. Cheers to a great show. Thank you, Seymour Cannabis. I try. It's hard sometimes because I don't really like talking much about me, especially, and it's hard to keep talking and interested because I know other shows you see people, they sit there and they watch, and I have to keep it interested somewhat. What up, small? Grubkowski, what's happening? Would gypsum help drop pH anyway, sunshine? Uh, gypsum's the... Yes, it's in the limestone, in the lime. Hang on, what is it again? I'm, I'm fully out of whack. You put gypsum in high soil to drop it and lime in acidifying soil to raise it, to get it back to neutral. Or well, getting matter is a really good uh, alternative to that. You get farmyard manure and sprinkle it, and that's a good starting for all the microbes to get that process happening. Uh, another, oh, this is to change from judges from 6.5. I was going to mention the big iron pyrite thing if it was a high pH, but 6.6, yes. Yes, that's good. Well, on the pH scale, here you go. I'll show you a pH thing. At least I can do something nice today. Put in a smidgen of effort. Uh, plant science. Uh, pH. Actually, I'll go to another one. So I'm just, at the moment, I'm just looking for um, a slide to show you the pH scale in reference to what Sunshine was just talking about. Uh, where is the slide? It should be in here. There it is. No, it's not. There it is. All right, now I've got to share my screen. Present. Share screen. Entire screen will do. Um, here. So here's the... Where's the numbers? I have to see the numbers. So the 6.5 here pretty much is a lot of green and there's zero red. If you go into your six, you've got a few Kelmag that's in your red and your phosphorus is in red too, so things can struggle and you can get deficiencies. If you go up above 7.5, you've got red action as well in your boron and calcium. So by staying the 6.5 to 7 is a perfect range to make the plants available to all these nutrients that it needs of its 17 essential nutrients. Good question. They're sunshine rainbows. Um, I can't remember, Monty. Uh, question, have you... Here you go, I don't like me, my head bouncing around. Put that on. There we go. Have you dealt with soft-bodied insects like aphids? Yeah. Uh, well, aphids are good to ladybugs. Uh, aphids, enemy. So that helps with that. Also, Bacillus syringiensis is really good too or um that's bt uh what's the other one that's really cool it puts white muscular disease on it it's um uh i don't want to go and get it it starts with b as well buveria bassiana that's a really really good one because that works against soft soft bodied insects and it puts a it goes on and lays spores on it this Buveria bassiana, and it leaves and it forms the spores, and that forms a white musculin disease on these insects and gets rid of them. Um, another thing that you can use, which is organic, is the salt, fatty salts of potassium, potassium salts of fatty acid. It's words of that, but that's really good. It dissolves the shells of soft insects' bodies and works really good. I'd probably try those few remedies first. The the spray's all right because you can try that first and it's not really going to harm many other things because if it's above the soil on the plants like where aphids are, you're not going to really damage much of the things you buy biosphere on the top layer of your soil. I hope that helps, Koski. My rainwater is 5.8, which I love, but I find if I put air stones in it for 12 hours, it raises it to six. Yes. Did you know that if you submerge any water, if it's acidic or, say, alkaline to pH 9, 
that it'll slowly neutralize it and get it back to around seven. It's fascinating uh, through the processes um, that they do through the water, breaking it down and exchanging with the oxygen. It's rad. Good on you, Aussie Autos. Keep up the good work, mate. Did they get inside Koski? Okay. I'm a Dolomite fan. Yeah, you see, he's into his lime. Jeff loves his lime. Doesn't hurt. Keeps things neutral. Try, try um, farmyard manure, Jeff. Um, instead, next time, maybe get some... Well, I like kangaroo poo and rabbit poo. I got wild right, rabbits like in the ACT. There's heaps of kangaroos and stuff. So if you know that they... The reason why I get that is because it doesn't have any antibiotics put in it because you don't want to kill your microbes because that's what it's basically trying to do, get all the microbes established with all of the spores that are in the, in the farmyard manure. And when it's in their favourable environment with a bit of moisture, more than likely they'll sprout and sprout. They'll, um, they'll germinate and proliferate. <laughs> ah, gee whiz. Pure crop. Here you go. Pure crop one kills aphids. I've killed and with it. See, speaking from experience. That's good. Good work, Frank. Yep. My fault totally. Oh, the thing is... The rad thing is about making, they're not, nothing's a mistake because you learn from it. I've done all these things and I've made mistakes and I still make sometimes, shh, sometimes I still make the same mistake, but don't tell anybody. It's hard because <laughs> um, you learn by them. So they're not mistakes, they're learning processes, I reckon. It's good fun. Without all the bugs, I've heard it was good. I've used spinosad on aphids. Wowee. Spinosad's rad on thrips. Really good on thrips. Yeah, I haven't tried it on aphids. I'm sure it might work. Spinosad also kills my uh, springtails, which I wasn't happy with. So I'm sure it would work on other things. It's a spinosad's a bacteria that they get out of guts of, um, I think it's a worm. Very cosky. What's he reckon? Uh Burn everything, start over, save yourself a nightmare. See, that's that's another solution that you can do. There's so many different things that you can do to for different solutions. It's so cool. Give the pure crop one a try. Buy one can. I, Frank's should solve the problem and you'll have extra over afterwards. Pure crop one's got um, natural botanicals in it. It's got like garlic and onion and uh, cayenne pepper things like that in it so it's a really good alternative or, or organic alternative as well sweet i'll leave your link on your channel okay i'm not sure what that means oh there's four things in chat here oh here we go there's a question while i look in the private chat oh yeah that was from terence here you go terence i'll go back to the comments what's your thoughts on insect frazz for extra trichome production i love it i haven't done the tests with a pro and a, and against but the, it makes sense because it's the insect fraz, which is the excrement in it. So it's putting in like microbes and possibly spores. So you're adding microbes at a certain stage. So that's targeting that pathway, which produces trichomes that development, you know, the jazz one and the COL one pathway. So I would suggest that it works just from like um, understanding that pathway, but I haven't done the side-by-side -side tests and I use that too in maybe day 20, 25 on, uh, 20 onwards. Yep, it's good. Well, I haven't put it to the test, but yeah, it's nothing wrong with an extra bit of terps in your, in your mix. It's beautiful. Good question, Aussie Autos. Intelligent fellow, that fella. Pure crop run for aphid issues. All natural, medical approved application. Yes, it's good stuff, eh, mate? BTI is brilliant for gnats. Really? For gnats, eh? Get rid of those gnats. Gnats is also, the biological for gnats is Steenonema felti. That's the nematodes that are six, very good at it. You put, they go into your substrate. Oh, there's Google E. How you going, Google E? Insect Frazzy loves to 
Sikorsky, Google knows what's up. Yes, Google knows everything. If you ask that Google fella, this fella, holy mackerel, he will just tell you what's going on in detail too. <laughs> Cloudscape Mysterio, how are you this morning? Good no, Good evening. All right, you're in Australia. All right, that's the end. That's the uh, few questions. Thank you for your questions. This is no more questions. I think that will be it for today. I'll come on next third, next Saturday, just to say hello and yeah, just to say good day. But I won't be putting any effort into it for the show through the week. So I'll just be, I can do what I did today, just answer some questions and show some slides from what I do have. I hope that's what you want. But sorry, it's in Christmas time. We got a few weeks off, and I've been, it's hard to do the shows. So I got to put a lot of effort in through the weeks to pull slides out to try and talk about something interesting so it's just not unrelated so i do like to make a good thing for it um i've got them under control i was curious about others yeah no worries koski yeah it's always good to find out eh? see what the latest stuff is what other people have used and see what's going on um good show mate oh thanks for the autos and vinnie good on you vinnie uh and well that's it so i'll be here next week and I'm going to put that breeding thing off for a few weeks. Hey, Rosie, everyone. So I'll see you next this time in seven days and 168 hours. And um, I hope you all have a great, fantastic weekend and week. Thank you for everybody in chat rocking up and asking your cool questions. I appreciate your efforts. And happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you all. Bye-bye.